With its rich history and unparalleled connection to this land, is Australia missing out on a huge opportunity to have an Indigenous bipartisan voice to Parliament at the top level to ensure ethical decisions are being made to help protect this land, the environment and its peoples? Dani. A hundred percent. OK, like I said before, the Uluru Statement from the heart was a gift to the, the Australian people for everyone to wa walk together as one. It was a people's movement and it was a calling for democratic action and actually listening to First Nations. Um, and, you know, the government taking action on this really important constitutional reform proposal that's being pr proposed, and that's a voice to parliament, a constitutionally entrenched voice to parliament. Now, this started over 10 years ago and we've had a heap of reports, we've had a heap of consultation that's been had from community. We're now in the co-design pr process and that's coming towards the end and we'll have an interim um, report that gets put to the government and the government will then um, look at the different options, um, design options of how the voice would function and, and then another consultation process will be had. My issue with all of that is the people that were involved in the regional dialogues and the Uluru Convention, the First Nations, the cultural authority, the peoples who have put blood, sweat and tears to, you know, coming up with this type of meaningful, substantive structural reform for First Nations to finally have a voice to Parliament to have a say on laws and policies that impact upon First Nation affairs for the first time um, and, a, and a really important given our history we're still waiting for action and I want to see the elders and the cultural authority that participated in the dialogues actually see this come to a referendum, see some sort of, you know, positive resolution and outcome filing be reached by the government. And so I think it's really down to, and maybe Dave Sharma can shed some light on this because there's lacked transparency in the co-design process. It's um, not been, you know, involved... It hasn't involved First Nations um, who were involved in the regional dialogues in the Uluru Convention. Um, it's been quite clouded in secrecy um, and... and and that's been an issue. So I, I really don't know where things are at with where we're moving forward from here. D with... Dave Sharma, what, what does it say that someone like Dunny, who has been involved in this process quite substantially, now doesn't know where it's at? I, look, I, th I think it's unfortunate. I mean, someone like Dunny's got a real contribution to make to this process, as do you know, many Indigenous Australians. And with the, the consultation process with developing the voice, this is there's a commission being led by... Tom Carmer and Marshall Langton, I believe, that are meant to be going out and consulting with communities um, across Australia, Indigenous communities, Indigenous leaders, Indigenous elders across Australia to help develop a voice that reflects, um, you know, the aspirations of, of those people consulted and, and creates a workable vehicle for this to happen. So, um, look, we do need to get this consultation process right. It needs to have a, a wide degree of buy-in and legitimacy for it to happen. So, you know, I'd, um, uh, I'd be happy to you know, catch up with Danny offline afterwards and see if we can fix up some of this. Can you clarify for all of us whether a referendum is, is going to happen? Well, we're committed to... Um, the government's commitment is to developing the voice and then constitutional recognition. So um, constitutional recognition obviously does involve a referendum, uh, but I think it's important that we make sure that any question we put to a referendum has a strong chance of success. I think with the, you know, success rate on referendums is about... Eight out of the last 44 have been successful. So we want to make sure that whatever what we put forward um, has broad public buy-in, broad state buy-in, broad Indigenous buy-in and has a high chance of passing. So probably not in this term of parliament? I think it's unlikely in this term of parliament, yes. Ken Henry, you do work in this area as well? Well, yes. I'm, I, well, I don't know how many in the audience would be aware. I'm, I'm on the board of um, Cape York Partnership, uh, which... Uh, is trying to create employment opportunities for Indigenous people in Cape York. Actually, we're doing better than trying. We are <laughs> creating... And I used to be on the board of Reconciliation Australia um, was for some time. I, and, look, I can't tell you how, how gutted I was when I saw uh, Prime Minister Turnbull's response to the Uluru Statement from mm. the Heart. Like, actually, I was beyond gutted. I was, I was just so angry. Um, I can't tell you how angry I was. I, I, I've been um, stunned, really, at the... Ex uh, that there's been... that no, Well, really, that Indigenous people have not reacted with greater anger 
So, so Danny said, said, just, just, Danny said Danny twice responded. tonight. Can we just let Danny yeah. respond to that? Yeah. I'm sorry, but it's a cop-out. I mean, I, I do find that remark to be quite frustrating because I'm there. I'm protesting, you know, in Black Lives Matter movements and I'm mm. there advocating relentlessly and so are many other First Nations and non-Indigenous Australians mm. across this country um, frustrated and wanting this to be finally dealt with, wanting to come together and wanting a referendum on this. We want to yes. restore principles of representative democracy and actually let the people decide, put it to a referendum and let the people decide. And even though there's been failed referendums in the past, the one that actually got the most yes votes ever in Australian history was the 1967 referendum and that was on Indigenous affairs. So we're fed up with it and, you know, part of, you know, the issue with our structural... Um, issues within Australia is the fact that we have been forced to be really complacent um, with this kind of unethical decision making and exclusion of our rights politically. Yeah. So it's about I think time. There's, there's a really important point, though, that I think there's a really important point that Danny's made on two occasions now, which I think often gets missed in this. And she presented the Uluru statement not as a demand from Indigenous people, but as a gift that was offered to yeah. everyone. Yeah. I think Australians, when they come to have a referendum and all the rest, need to understand that this is not about giving something to Indigenous people. This is an offer for everybody to make, it, to make us all better off as a nation. And the frustration and the anger that mm. you often hear mm. is from people who say, can't you understand what we're trying to give you? And you, you won't even spurn. And, and I think unless we understand the context of that simple truth... Mm. the debate will never be properly understood. Yeah. So, so is it not a deficit of anger amongst Indigenous Australians to how Malcolm Turnbull responded to the Uluru Statement, but rather a deficit of anger from the non-Indigenous population? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, yes, absolutely. Mm. I think so. Tanya Plibersek. Um, I support a voice to Parliament. Uh, I support a treaty and I support um, Makarata, truth-telling. I think Australia will be a stronger, better nation when uh, non-Indigenous Australians properly face the truth of our history. Uh, and I, I think um, what Dani's saying about uh, this being a great a gift, uh, extending a, a hand, uh, is a beautiful way of putting it. And it, it frustrates me no end that we know we're not further along the track we should be.